Okay, so the Aberration Remover Python script has just received a pretty significant update. Not only has the AI model been improved on, but there are also parameters that we can adjust while running the script. If you're not familiar with the Aberration Remover, it has a way to do just that, remove the aberrations from within your image. And it removes those aberrations from stellar and non-stellars. It takes care of all kinds of aberration, whether it's from astigmatism, coma, spherical aberrations, it just does a fantastic job of fixing those images up for us. One thing to keep in mind, this is to be ran at the beginning of your workflow, so on linear data before you stretch your data. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now. My name is Rich, and you're watching Deep Space Astro. All right, so if you don't already have the aberration remover script installed, you can do so by coming up into scripts, get scripts, and it'll be in the list down here, but the easiest way to find it is use the search bar and just start typing aberration. It'll pop right up for you. Make sure it's selected over on the right hand side and then click apply. Have to have an image opened up before we start. So we are going to open up my sole image that I've been working on and we'll come out of linear into auto stretch so we can see the data. So the aberration remover is going to be used early on in your workflow, but there are a few steps that you need to complete before using it. The first is to crop your image to get rid of any of your stacking artifacts. The second will be to run an, a background extraction to remove any gradients in the image. And then the third, if it's a color image, is to run your color calibration. So that's what I'm gonna do now. We'll just give it a quick crop around the edges, right click, and then crop and then i'm going to come up into scripts python scripts processing auto bge for my background extraction you can use graxpert you can use serials built-in background extraction it's up to you which one you want to use it doesn't matter i'm just going to leave the defaults for the purpose of this video and click process and once background extraction is complete I'm just going to close it before we do a color calibration as you know we have to plate solve our image first so we're going to come up into tools astrometry image plate solver and then click OK. Image is plate solved so now I'm going to come up into image processing, color calibration and spectrophotometric color calibration. These settings are correct for this image so I'm going to click OK to color calibrate the image, close it when it's complete. Now we're ready to run the aberration remover script. So before we do so I'm just going to zoom up in the corner here because you can see how the stars are stretched I believe because back focus is off a little bit with this data and the obvious answer to correct a problem like this would be to correct the back focus issue right but I'm just using this data as an example so you can see how the script works and sometimes you just have an issue like this and you didn't even realize you had a problem until you finished your imaging session and you stack your data and you know then you're left with stars that look like this so we'll come up into scripts python scripts processing and aberration remover now, if you've previously downloaded the script and have been using it with this new version, you will see the download button in red, as well as the note down here saying that there's a new model version available. If this is your first time running the script, you won't see this message. You just need to download the latest model and make sure that you load it. So the process is the same, whether you've used it before or this is your first time. So you're gonna click on download model and info. It's gonna bring you over to the developer's GitHub page and you wanna download model version two. Just click on the link and you need to pay attention to where you're downloading this because you need to tell the script where you've put the, the AI model. For me, I have it on my C drive. I have a folder called Astrophotography and then I created one called Aberration Remover. You can see I already have the old model in there. So I'm just gonna put the new model in that same folder. Click Save. Once that completes downloading, come back into the script, click on Load Model and then I'm gonna browse out to my C drive, Astrophotography, Aberration Remover, and there's the model that I just downloaded. So I'm gonna double click on that. Our warning messages went away and we're ready to go. Now, what's new in this version, if you're familiar with the script, you already see it. We have a strength bar, dark ringing reduction, and an option to protect the background. We're gonna leave the strength over at one, dark ringing reduction. There are more than a few of you that had mentioned that you were noticing some dark ringing around your stars when I did a tutorial for the original version of the script and the developer has included an option to help reduce that, which obviously is called dark ringing reduction. So if you're getting dark ringing around your stars, you wanna make sure you select that. Protect the backgrounds will mask off the background pixels and not apply the model to those areas that are protected by the mask. Now the developer has said that you should not need to adjust any of these settings. Leave the strength on one, leave dark ringing reduction turned off, leave protect background turned off. They're there if you need it. If you need it, he wants to know about it. So open up an issue on his Again, his GitHub site, he says right here, in normal conditions, you should not need to adjust these parameters. 
If manual tuning is required, please consider it a potential issue and report it. So here's your issues button up here. Just come up in the issues and then click your new issue button and let them know what's going on and what you need to do and provide them with your data to work with. So with that being said, we're just gonna click the calculate button. See your progress down the bottom as well as over in the console. Once it says process is complete, you can close the script and let's just do it before and after. Obviously this is the after. So if I undo this, you can see all the stars. Let me zoom in this a little bit more for you. That's before and that's after. Before and after. And this is not only just a stellar process, right? It's also a non-stellar process. So stellar meaning a star is non-stellar meaning our data in the image. So if we come over here and it's slight on this image, but I can see it. If I undo this and you watch right around the edges of this structure right here, as I redo it, you can see a slight effect. It was slightly blurred because of the aberrations. The problems in the data that causes the stars to, to blur or to stretch is due to the point spread function. So once that's corrected, it also corrects your nebula, galaxies, any other structures within your image. So you're not just fixing the stars, you're, you're fixing the data in the image too where it needs it. So that's a color image. Like I said, obviously this works on mono images as well. So like we did before, we want to give it a quick crop and then run a background extraction on it. Once the background extraction is complete, then we'll just zoom up in one of these corners here like we did with the other image, come up into scripts, Python scripts, processing, aberration remover. Again, default settings, unless we absolutely need them. Run the process, it'll be a little bit quicker on the mono image because it doesn't have to go through all three channels, close it when we're done, and then again we can do a before and after. One more time, before and after. I love the script in version one, and version two is just even better. It's, it's gotten a lot smarter, it's given us those options to make fine adjustments if need be. Again, if you do find yourself needing to play with the processing options, let the developer know that you're having an issue with it. You'll be helping him make the next version of the model even better. So one more thing that I want to talk about is the licensing for the AI model. Again, this is the page where we downloaded the model so you can look this information up yourself. And what this license is preventing in part is anybody using it in any paid services. So this means this AI model cannot be used in PixInsight per the license that he's released it under. And I'm gonna ask also if you can, make a small donation to the developer. It's not easy to come up with these AI models and train them and get them to work the way that he has got this one to work for us. So again, same page where you download the model, you can make a donation right underneath, make a stellar difference. So I'm gonna practice what I preach and make my donation right here so you guys can see it. Thanks Ricardo, appreciate all your hard work. Got a few bucks coming your way. So that was just a real quick video to show you guys a new version of the script and the AI model that he's developed. I hope you guys found it useful. Before you go, I wanna say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and on Buy Me A Coffee. I appreciate everybody's support. If you wanna support the channel, there's a number of ways you can do so. You can become a member here on YouTube or on Buy Me A Coffee, links are in the description, or you can buy merchandise from my store. I also have affiliate links in the description as well that if you make a purchase through any of those distributors, I get a small commission. I the sale no extra cost to you and it's all very much appreciated so that's a wrap for this video we'll see you on the next one and clear skies